Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to do an update to um, an earlier video where I did the unboxing of this. I pretty much got this unit assembled, and I kind of uh, there seemed to be a lot of interest in this. And so I just kind of wanted to follow this up um, as, as I go through the build process, which the build process is, is basically done on this. So one of the things I've done, as I mentioned before, is I designed these manifolds, uh, basically funnels, to go on here and here to adapt um, the inlet and output of, uh, of, of this fan system. So this is, uh, as you might recall from the unboxing video, one horsepower fan that I'm setting up for fume extraction for my lasers. And actually, I was a little bit nervous that I had um, purchased maybe too big, and maybe it is a little bit big if you have one, but I am actually I have a couple laser printers and I've decided actually to plumb this in a way where I can actually support multiple, uh, I keep calling them laser printers, laser cutters. So I've actually had multiple laser cutters and so um, this has actually turned out a little bit more interesting than I thought. So a couple of the things that I thought was were interesting, so I printed this funnel and, and really this came out pretty good. There's a couple aberrations here where it got to the very top uh, and I printed this rather thin uh, 0.8 with like 15 percent infill uh, so I could get this ramp and this ramp is actually only about 40 or 50 degrees it's under 60 degrees this one down here is up around 60 degrees and it printed very nice and it actually didn't start sagging until the very top here so I was as impressed and I printed these on the Wanhow and you'll see up in the corner I'll put some um, time lapses of these being printed and everything. Uh, so it came out very well. The other thing I did is um, I printed these very very tight to the um, specifications of both openings and then what I did is I took a heat gun warmed it up. This is PLA and press fitted it on there. Then what I did is I took uh, XTC 3D and I coated them to make them very hard and durable. This is one of the reasons I didn't concern myself um, with a big infill on these because I knew I was going to be either coating this with X, coating these with XTC or epoxy. Uh, so this came out very well, made for a very, uh, these, these are not glued on and they're very tight because between the XTC and the, uh, the fit, I did nick it, I decided, um, I had a little bit of lifting on this and I, I figured I'd get smart and put it on the lathe and turn it, that did not work well. So I had a little nick here, but that that's fine, that's the only reason have this. The other thing I did is I printed uh, out of TPU vibration pads for this to sit on and then um, use quarter 20 bolts with fender washers to come up here and, and hold this in place. This actually works very very nice for noise. I've noticed that um, uh, again doing this the whole noise thing and once, once I get this set up I'll actually run it for you and show you in another video, but the noise on this is really reduced with these baffles baffling this down because one of the pieces that I did is, as you might have seen in, in, in prior videos, uh, my extraction system is all one and a half inch PVC, so what I've done is uh, I've made this so it's a snug fit with the PVC both uh, uh, for the inlet and the outlet here because what happens is uh, this hooks to the uh, system in the shop that draws from the uh, 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 laser cutters and then what I do is I use uh, as you probably saw in the other video where I printed 3D printed the back for the laser uh, I use uh, half inch gate valves as my blast gates to control this and then feed this into here and then this is exhausted up a tube and out the basement wall so this actually has worked pretty good now I've, I've done a couple of tests with it um, I've got to change a little bit of the plumbing uh, to put this in finally and also kind of as, as, as a side note probably as you're watching this uh, I'm going to be working on building a new shop so I'm not going to install this permanently and this is one of the reasons I'm not showing this um, permanently installed. I'm only going to temporarily install it because it's going to get moved to a new shop area uh, in the very near future. But I did want to show the updates. If you're interested, I don't know if I'll put these up on Thingiverse. I designed these with my uh, Open SCAD adapter. If you look back in the videos, I, I've done adapters for the um, my chop saw and everything. It's the same Open SCAD program. I just measured these and output them. 
and exported the STLs and printed them. Worked great. I think I might even have a Thingiverse uh, object, if you follow me on Thingiverse out there, to do these. If not, let me know. I'll put them out there, or I'll get you the STLs if you're interested. But all in all, I, I, I got to say, I'm happier than I thought I would be with this. And the noise uh, with this, especially since I've added these baffles, uh, you know, quite a bit lower than what I expected. So, which is a good thing, because as you remember in my unboxing, one of the big reasons for doing this was the noise of my existing shop vac extraction system, which, which works very well, but unfortunately is very noisy. So, uh, again, happy with this. Now, um, one of my longtime viewers, I think, and, and I'm sorry if I don't get the name right, is Zeroto Labs. Uh, he's got a great channel, by the way, if, you, uh, if you're interested in 3D printing and electronics. He does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, mentioned that you could use this for a vacuum table. I was a little bit concerned at first, and I got thinking about what he had written, and because I, I was kind of concerned that the drag on this, since it's not designed to have a drag, could burn up the motor. But after kind of playing, I actually played around with the concept a little bit, and I think it actually might work. So if you're looking for a, a vacuum table, this could probably work really good. Now, what I might do if I use this for a vacuum table is the size of the vacuum because this will create a significant amount of vacuum. And it does seem if you hold the vacuum, it doesn't um, impact the motor that negatively. You know, like if you have a vacuum cleaner and you plug it up, you know how it screams because it's working against itself. This doesn't seem to get as bad. And if there is a little bit of bleed, actually, it seems to be okay. So... I think you could, I think to his point, you could probably actually use this for a vacuum table. And, and actually, this is sort of what I'm thinking a little bit of doing in the new shop is actually just having vacuum ports because one of the things I want to build in, uh, I think I've mentioned in prior videos, I'm going to have air dropped in, I'm going to have dust collection dropped in, and I think I'm going to do a vacuum line as well as potentially a water line because a lot of the equipment I'm getting is... Um, now water cooled. So I've got the two laser cutters which are water cooled. I now have a CNC which is water cooled. And I'm actually kicking around the idea of converting some of my printers to actually being water cooled. So I'm thinking about putting in um, a, a refrigeration system inside the shop for my water cooled devices. Um, so anyways, um, again back to this, I think having a, a dust port or sorry, a vacuum port would be interesting for different vacuum tables because one of the other things I've always been interested in, in messing around with is vacuum forming. I think this would be great for vacuum forming uh, because for the, the period of the vacuum form, uh, there would be no issues, I don't think, with this. I would be, I'd be highly surprised because I've, I've held my hand on here for a couple minutes, again, trying to play around with uh, his, his Rotos concept of... Um, uh, you know, using this as a vacuum device, and, and I saw no issues. And again, it really, because of the, the draw, I mean, you have this big area here. Now, what I would probably do, and, and you guys can comment below if you think I'm wrong or you'd do it differently, I would probably see about um, porting, you know, so I've got an inch and a half here. I might go a little bit bigger to a vacuum table, maybe like two inches, because there is a bit of attenuation of this funnel. And the other thing I may experiment with in the future, especially as changing shops, um, I didn't want to have a real long taper on the funnel like I do here. So if I brought this out, it would actually stick out further. But I'm thinking about changing my my concept of that in the new shop because I'll have more space and actually do that. And the reason for that is I'm thinking the draw of air into uh, the unit might be uh, far better uh, because one of the things uh, which you guys haven't seen. I've done several experiments with um, fume extraction, and one of the things I've I've come to find, and, and it should be common sense because I do know a little bit of, of um, uh, fluid dynamics, is this taper is going to affect you know how the draw happens. You know, so if this was flat versus having more and more taper it is going to allow more of a venturi effect of drawing air in. So, anyways, uh, my point with that is is you could get a lot of vacuum out of this into a vacuum table, and you could get a very strong drawdown is my point. So, anyways, 
just wanted to kind of update you guys with where I'm at with this and, and basically the plumbing is simple uh, as you saw I'm just for right now going to duct this as you saw in the last video into my existing one and a half inch system and just duct this outside in, in, in the existing piping so no magic there but I did want to show you these pieces uh, because I think they all go together to show you uh, if you get one of these how you would turn it into a fume extraction system or even, as Roto Labs mentioned, a vacuum table system. So, um, again, very happy with this. Uh, I also do probably something when I do set it up and I get some time, because unfortunately i got to do a lot of traveling for business right now, is use my dB meter to measure the noise of this versus the shop vac. But this is far, far quieter. So, anyways, if you found this interesting, give her a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.